Okay, concrete does two things. It gets hard and it cracks. And uh, these cracks, I mean, you can't put a coin in them. They're not that large. They seem to be petering out a little bit. Looks like a little bit of swelling here. Um, you know, dealing with the builder, you can say, well, they don't have cracks. And so, well, these are normal. I'm like, okay, well, they need to redo that driveway and make it look like this one? I, I don't know how that, that works. But, um, and by the way, driveways like this, the porch, that's in the scope of this inspection driveway. You know, flat work, sidewalks, that's not the scope of this inspection. But still, which is amazing because if you attach a carport to it, then it would be. But, but we got some cracks. The front door. Threshold gasket is torn right in here. Hey, Brian. Okay, this doorbell button should be sealed. I think they finally made doorbells part of the SOP. They weren't part of the SOP, but I like to I like to push them. This is the downstairs office study. And all the receptacles, all that I could get to are working. Double pane vinyl frame windows. Uh, this is kind of unusual right here. Is, well, not unusual, but I'm looking for things. Is the closet light doesn't seem to work. So there's that. A little bit of ceramic flooring right in here. Got the half bath of ceramic flooring. We've been in here. Stairs seem to be spaced appropriately. Handrails are graspable. Now there's something about the stairs is that the Texas Real Estate Commission does, I mean they require it on disclosure I think or something that don't require that a home inspector look at it or call it deficient. Um, but we do not have emergency escape ladders. Something you might want to think about. We don't have emergency escape ladders outside the window for the windows in case there's a fire and somebody has to make a go run for it, jump. But that's not a deficiency that you don't have them. But it seems to be, you know, that a lot of people don't like to talk about it. I'm not seeing any floor receptacle outlets. Smoke alarms are all in the appropriate locations. <clears throat> There's something else that people like to talk about, whatever, disclosure. But the smoke alarms are not hearing and for hearing impaired people. This is the media room. And a nice dark soothing blue. And in the wall here we have an extension cord type device. It's a built-in extension cord. I'm seeing this in a lot of media rooms. And this device may or may not be UL listed. I'm seeing them. I, I would put some faith in it. I would use something like that. I'm using something a little more Mickey Mouse than that at my home now. I mean, but, you know, I can't tell you that that's um, UL listed. Um, the in-wall extension cord for your media room. It's a, an attractive register. Okay. Now looking out this way, we're coming in. This is the home faces west. Okay, so this would be the north bedroom, northeast bedroom. This is all of them. These windows measure to be about 23 inches. When the code inspector came in, there probably wasn't any flooring in here, and he measured it at 24 inches. Because the code is that a window that's higher from the ground than 72 inches should not be closer to the floor than 24 inches to keep little children and, and old men like me from spilling out of them. And uh, so now it's just a little bit shy, just a, you know, just you know, maybe not even a full inch. Shots, not quite 24 inches. These windows aren't. 
So, I mean, I don't know if anybody's going to raise the window for you. You know, I just I don't. Double pane vinyl frame. I haven't found any windows that are... Oh, this is interesting. I haven't found any windows um, that are fogging. I can't uh, determine that the windows are fogging. You too, huh? Okay. <clears throat> I knew that that was the case with that window through there. But that window through there and this window, they do not close and latch properly. So, there's that. I thought I left you go on. Did I not turn, did I turn this off when I, okay. We've been to the vanity, you know. Um, you don't know this yet, but we've got a video of, of all this. And this and this. And that. And this and that. Bathroom fans vent to the exterior. You got another video. That same video I'm talking about. We got the loose stopper. We're going to talk about. That. We're going to talk about that. Not in depth. No, this window doesn't latch. Like the other window, this window doesn't latch either. So they don't fit real fast. A glazier will come in, and they can adjust those in a matter of moments. We're going through, we're working our way through the Jack and Jill and the, through both the vanities. I've been through here and it's been a plumbing thing. So this is the interior. I try not to duplicate too much, but you know, my client's coming from out of town. My client's have never seen this. Oh, I think he's seen this house. They've seen this house, excuse me. Excuse me, ma'am. But, you know, buying a home long distance, maybe you just wanna see second and third takes, I guess. Uh, opens and closes. Those are the only two windows I've had issues with. Is the one in the Jack and Jill bathroom and the one in the northeast bedroom. And I haven't found issues with the other windows. But another video. We're coming in. Okay, we got a ceiling fan that's out of balance. Okay, there we go. So if the house faces west. So that'd be the southwest bedroom ceiling fan. Southwest bed fan balance. Okay. I saw one inspector report. He said that the fan was wobbly. I guess so. I guess you could say it's wobbly. I'll just say that it's out of balance. Coming on along. There's the Bonnie cart right down there. She always makes a cameo. I'm kind of fond of that little thing. Not real fond of it though. She does disappoint me. In some areas. Called, I don't have any room. But, you know, if space, interior space, and not an issue. <laughs> She's a really good little car. Went back down the stairs, closets, just make sure, you know, all the doors open and closing like they should. Some people call it ghosting, but none of them are uh, opening or closed, swinging open or swinging closed on their own accord. That's a good thing. Moving on down, down these stairs that I can't find an issue with, except that we don't have a ladder that's not required. We got a text going on. That. Oh, it's my wife. Oh, she still cares. <laughs> anyway, so here we are in the, the great, sometimes people call this the gathering room. Sometimes they call it the great room. Sometimes they call it the living room. So whatever room it is today, this is it. Now the National Marble Institute says that if you have a granite countertop, that overhangs more than 10 inches, you should have some support under it, a corbel or something, and we don't, we don't have that. We don't have that, so don't sit on that. Don't sit on that, it might break. And then it'd be kind of an expensive fix. That's why they want the support underneath there. Um, I don't know how rambunctious my family's gonna be. 
so I'm, I'm here to tell you about it, that, and then, you know, the foul line. We're going to talk about some things. Back in here, all the receptacles, outlets, fireplace. I've done it twice. Done it twice. Windows are operating like they should. This window screen is uh, beat up a little bit. This window screen is beat up a little bit. It opens and closes. This door is real stiff. This latch right here is real stiff. I'm picking up spares. These weeps. Remember weep holes I'm talking about for the windows? Because the windows are designed so that they shed water. So we're coming on along here. And I noticed that we're missing one right here. This is in the primary bedroom right there. We're missing one of those weeps. You buy a whole sack of them for like 25 bucks, 20, 12 bucks, whatever. Ah, we're missing two. Look at that. Two weeps. All right. And if you can get them off the um, loading dock, you can. They, they cost about twelve dollars for a sack of them. Weeps too. More ceramic tile, more carpet. This carpet, by the way, upstairs would have been a better place to show you, honestly. But all the same, see that guy's tight. All the same, all of this carpet, especially upstairs, but all of this carpet could be tighter. And I just think that it's going to, it's inevitable. It's going to need to be restretched and clean. You know, you want to get some more distance out of it? I mean, this is contractor grade carpet. It's good for about five years, I say. It looks like it was uh, easily lived in. Okay, it doesn't look like it's abused too much. I mean, I was giving a hard time about the screen and dogs and the doors and the chalk. And the kids and stuff, but you can get some more mileage out of this to have it cleaned and stretched and fluffed up. And uh, you can take it for a ride, it'll go. All right, now we're moving on along through the dining area, through the windows. I got off on the sidetrack like I usually do. I'm a sidetracker. We're in the primary bedroom. Some people call it the, okay, again, really bad, primary was, parent was, something else room. It's just difficult sometimes writing a report so everybody understands what you're talking about. And my client's not here, like I said, you know, so I put the thermostats back where I found them. This one was on an 80, I think the upstairs one was on 83, this one around the corner was off. We talked about the gap underneath the shower door. But all these doors are all working and stuff. We talked about that. We talked about that. Talked about how boring the plumbing is under here. We did. We were gossiping about the plumbing. And speaking of gossiping about the plumbing, I promised you this is the crescendo. Okay, because we've been in the kitchen. We've been in the... Uh, laundry, you know, so all this is pretty much taken care of. We've all been here in the garage and everything, so now's the time for the crescendo. I do not, I did not, well, I ran out of battery for one thing, but I was not prepared to inspect the microwave. So let's just go in here. We got a wet rag and we got Mr. Microwave's Magic Lights. See, because I'm under the, uh, I've been informed, I've learned that the microwave is supposed to pulse. So we don't want just heat, we want pulsating heat. So we go in here and uh, the fan's a little close and the filters are a little dirty and it's circulating by the way. Let's see if I see these little holes up here. The fan is those holes. So it's not a real big circulator. But we do cook time. 15 seconds, start it, and let it go. Ah, look at that. You don't have to watch any of the rest of the report. That's the whole show right there. That's the climax. That's the event. Magic lights. Steam coming off of this guy? Yeah, he's pretty darn hot. Pretty darn hot. Why are you whistling for me? That's weird. There we go. Thank you, kind client. 
I'm going to answer my wife's text now and go home.